kicking off a YouTube channel. It's gonna be called 10,000 Makes. We live in a ridiculous frozen tundra called Minnesota, and it's the land of 10,000 lakes. As we embark on this journey together to make 10,000 random things. So welcome to 10,000 Makes. So happy to have you here. You know, how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. Let's start with a quick shop tour. Uh, let me show you around. French cleats. If you're not familiar with French cleats, uh, they're an absolute game changer. So how these work, let me see, I can just, any of them, I can take off here. And so you'll see there is a you know piece of plywood on here that is cut at a 45 degree angle. So all of those are at a 45 degree angle there. And then what you do when you build a random box that you're gonna put on it, you put a cleat that is facing the other way, the 45 degree angle um, all the way down. And then you put a, uh, a brace to sit in between them. So you can put this wherever you want. And when you clip it on there, just the weight of it hangs down. And then what do they say? That's not going anywhere. These are magnets. These are dovetail jig. Uh, these are little machinist squares and they magnetize in. This guy just slips in the side. You have to solve the puzzle just to get this off. So all of that stuff show you here's the lathe station so we've got this little mini lathe it's a win lathe it is perfect for beginners I would highly recommend it because it's cheap I got mine off Craigslist wasn't even new and um, it's been great I've learned a ton I have also learned that I'm ready for a bigger better more powerful lathe because this thing gets bogged down with any sort of pressure as it's spinning, you're running your tool through it and it'll just stop because this, this motor that's in here is not very strong. Perfect for beginners um, so that you can learn what you like and what you don't like. I made this beast to hold it. You want something really sturdy and heavy uh, to be able to hold the lathe because it can vibrate and um, you want that to stay super still. There's also a, um, a practice run for um, these hidden drawer slides. See, you can't even see the drawer slides. They're on the bottom. So they're soft clothes too, because why not get fancy? Faces, respirators, air hose accessories, tape, command hooks, all you can handle. This is dust free. That's why I keep in here. It's dust free drawer. So I take off my uh, my dorky safety glasses and I'm gonna put them in there because I don't want dust all over these things all the time. So that works great. This is a slow speed grinder and I've got these attachments on here. Have 
on projects and stuff, and you're like, where do I put that? In the garbage? I wouldn't know. You didn't put anything in the garbage. Hoard everything. And so those go there until I sort them. Uh, this is a glue tray. This whole thing is my miter saw station. So this, I'll step back here. This is um, this I recycled cabinets from our kitchen rebuild. So we did a kitchen renovation and kind of cobbled them together uh, so that I could inset the miter saw on this roller cart in between. sander and you can pull this out to use it. I've got a hose that attaches to the back so this can connect up to my dust collection. We have a drill press here with a sort of a drill press cabinet. This should be on wheels. Remind me to put that on wheels. And then we've got uh, my Rikon 10 inch bandsaw. This thing's great. Awesome. Hoard your wood. All of the wood uh, was here and it used to be a lot worse. I'm getting better. Um, we also have some lumber racks around through the shop. But this dust collection, this thing has been awesome. This is a, a rigid uh, wet dry vac. You, these pleated things that are inside here, those are the worst to clean out. And so what has revolutionized that is the dust deputy from Oneida. But what happens is this connects up to the top of this funnel all of the dust starts to tornado in this thing and settles into this bucket, but then continues suction from your dust vac out through this. So when I'm doing the miter saw connection here, that's running behind all these tools all the way to here, screwed in right there, and then it's doing dust suction for the, the miter. And it stays out of my filter so I don't have to clean it out. You just dump this in the garbage. Look at all that. That's perfect. That's all dust that I don't have to clean out of my shop vac. So it's a one stall garage shop. Mm -hmm. uh, you gotta use every inch. Every dang inch of this place has to get utilized. So pull one of these doggers up. And then you can just pull that down whenever you need it. Uh, this is what used to be my motorcycle. I made my motorcycle into this. I sold my motorcycle and then I bought this. Uh, so wipe your tears. This thing is awesome. It's the best thing that I have in the shop for sure. It's got a giant bed on it. This has dust collection over the top, running through this arm down below, and then also uh, in the back there. The best part about the saw is you can't cut human flesh on this. In the blink of an eye, grab the blade throw it through a break and like drop back into the, the body of the saw. And then you just replace the brake cartridge and, and the saw blade. This fence though is absolutely the best part of the saw. I mean, losing fingers is, is great. Uh, not losing fingers is better. But this fence just rock solid. Best thing you could ever do for yourself if you have a table saw uh, is build yourself um, a crosscut sled that rides in these runners. The crosscut dealy bobbers that every uh, table saw comes with, are, they're all crap. Build yourself one that runs on the runners, wax up the bottom on this thing, but this thing is sweet. Then you can slide it and then tighten it. There, hands up, don't touch it. And then you slide this back and forth on the saw and you know exactly where that blade's gonna line up on your line. It's just dead on accurate, doesn't budge. Best thing ever. Really cool feature of my shop that I use all the time is uh, just this workstation here, which was a kitchen table that I uh, resurfaced. I, I ended, long time ago, one of my first woodworking projects, I built a new oak tabletop. Things weighs a thousand pounds, so it's just, it's a perfect work surface. Uh, ended up putting a vise on it, um, and it's, it's great for like an assembly table. I think they're called pedestals or something, but it's, that was for a washing machine and dryer. These are great just for storage. But one of the coolest parts about this is I drilled 
holes in this perfectly good tabletop. They're called dog holes. Uh, typically the standard is about three quarter inch for these dog holes, but you can buy a number of different types of dog hole accessories. So you can position these all over to hold, you know, different materials. And then you can position those with the clamps on the other side. Here, that stops this, your work piece. Crank this shut and I put a lip on here to push against any thing that's overhanging. So I can lock that into place right there. And now both those pieces are locked into each other if I need to like screw them together or glue them up or plane the surface of this without it moving around. Some other things that you can do, uh, this is like a straight edge. Similar to that clamp, maybe it was a smaller piece, but you can position this type of thing. I could clamp this edge board if I wanted to you know, trim just this edge with a planer, but I can't you know, it's gotta be held upright like that. These things called bench cookies, they come like this. I use them for staining or painting or what have you. It's a nice rubberized top. So things, it's like a hockey puck and then nothing slip. And then you can position those around your table to hold the piece up even further. Just route the whole edge if you wanna do like a round over bit. things that I use all the time um, to keep my lungs clean is this jet air filtration system and you can rock this thing at like a thousand CFM which is a lot So that thing's great, because all of that would have just been in my lungs. I've got my sandpaper, all my sanders up here, and then safety glasses and lacquer and paste wax and resin. And here we've got oh, all the screws. So I like to label everything. Some junk, hand tools, routers, uh, sharpening stones, mysterious misplaced junk we have to save. Another great thing, uh, favorite, favorite, I gotta say favorite. The remote control for my desk collector. I think at Home Depot, it's in there. I've got, I used to have one for lights, so that's L, and then V is for vacuum. That's the only thing I use it for is vacuum. So I press on, and I press off. So when I don't have to run back and forth between that. So I hook this up like to my bandsaw, for instance, and if I want to switch it over here, just so now I've got it hooked up to my miter saw and when I'm ready to go, turn that sucker on. And then uh, because I'm Batman, I put this on and I can just pop it right on my, uh, I don't know what this man vest apron. It's an apron. It's an apron. Some lights, some jigs, got some, Saw horses, uh, best movie of all time. Uh, scraps, We've got Doug's project on here. He's making some doors. Another go-to tool that I use all the time. Nail guns are just blowing dust off a project and I just keep full all the time. I know you're supposed to drain it after every use, but Who's got time? Nobody, ain't nobody got time for that. And then that runs all the way up to this pull down dogger. This thing is awesome. And then, oh, clamps. Ah, for clamps sake. All right, that's my shop tour. So welcome to 10,000 Makes, the land of 10,000 Makes. We're gonna work on it. We're gonna have a tagline. That doesn't work, we need a much better if we're, we're gonna be asking for subscribers and like ringing bells and hitting the note, no, close. How about uh, keep your chisels sharp? Um, how about keep your glue warm? <laughs> uh, stay warm, keep your chisels sharp. See you in the shop. This is gonna be great. Thank you for coming on this journey with me.